So as mentioned, we are, we are going to be talking about the increase in food prices because the reduction of the fuel subsidy and the resulting increase in fuel prices continue to have far-reaching effects as the economy begins to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, one such sector is food, particularly uh, the suppliers of food items. And so joining me in studio to discuss the effects it can have on us as customers is the president of the Supermarket Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Rajiv Dipti. Mr. Dipti, good morning and thank you so much for joining us on now. Good morning to the now morning show team and good morning to Nana Tobago. Now, Mr. Dipti, has the association done its assessment to determine what impact the increase in fuel prices would have on the uh, food sector and its suppliers? Well, there have been many factors playing into the strain on food prices right now, not uh, the biggest one would have been the one we would have all taken note of in the last two years, the pandemic and its effects on the global supply chain and the disruptions that would be taking place. Where the fuel prices are concerned, we have it's been it's being taken into account when we think about the bigger picture because there's so many factors playing into this equation right now that obviously when we consider that the cost of transport is going to go up and we consider that diesel was less so affected by than super and premium fuels, uh, we've you know, had the conversations with our suppliers who are also letting us know that that's not the only thing that they have to take into account right now. They're having to deal with the increase in the cost of shipping worldwide because of the conflict that you just described between Russia and Ukraine. We're seeing an increase in fuel prices, which leads to an increase in shipping. And shipping has had its concerns over the last two years, experiencing dramatic increases across the span of the container shipping crisis. We've also seen that the prolonged lockdowns in China have also led to certain um, you know, effects on the global supply chain where we've seen the disruptions. And the supply and demand equation is something that we look at very closely when we look at the food price equation. Uh, you know, Just going back to that whole armed conflict in Russia and Ukraine, those regions account largely for 30% of the world supply of wheat. So we're certainly going to be feeling that. And the fuel prices, as they are right now, it's certainly lending uh, an additional strain on the average consumer who has less disposable income right now. They were already feeling the impacts of that prior to the Minister of Finance announcement that fuel prices would be fair, would be going up. So it's certainly uh, something that, as you pointed out earlier, we, the brand loyalty is very much out the window. We're seeing a very price-sensitive consumer at the register, and we're seeing customers really trying to stretch their dollar at this time. Now, Mr. Dipti, the CSO, the Central Statistical Office, in a statement last month, said that consumers pay more for cricks, parboiled rice, uh, chilled and frozen chicken. They did say, though, that this was offset by the cost of, let's say, tomatoes, pumpkins and full cream milk. Uh, what is the reason for this increase and decrease? And, of course, apart from, you know, um, the conflict that's going on in Ukraine and Russia. And why I'm asking this question is because I know that crackers, for example, cricks would have been one of the zero rated items that the finance minister would have mentioned in his budget last year. So how are we still seeing in increases in some of these prices? Well, the long and short answer to that is that there's a, a value chain process that goes into the inputs of manufacturing when you consider the processes. Now, with that, when we consider headline inflation, uh, and what that means is that while we're looking at food prices, where we're not necessarily uh, um, we're not necessarily acknowledging that prices have gone up around the board for raw materials, uh, for plant and equipment, for a number of things that we have to consider, and the cost of operation would be affected by this. And this is something that local manufacturers and um, Talasex and local distributors would be taking into consideration. When we consider that the pandemic has really given us a lot of culprits where the, um, price, where the price increases are to account 
Uh, I mean, we, we look at the cost of shipping primarily in the last 18 months as the single biggest culprit because of the supply and demand equation. Um, and where we would have seen the price increases and the CSO would have outlined that data, uh, the, the, the pandemic, the war, the, um, the, there are certain things that we would have to consider from our suppliers and their, in, and their intelligence in the market right now, which means from their foreign principles based on the credit relationships that exist, that the price increases are this time inevitable from their side. From the fresh produce side, what we've seen is that it's, we've been able, there's been a gluttony market for some time, and it's been able to keep the prices down. And that, that is something that um, at this point in time we consider to be beneficial to the customers. We've also been working with local bodies such as NAMDEFCO and the Agricultural Society to promote import substitution strategies. And that is something that we will be exploring throughout 2022 because we recognize at the association and this is a situation that's not going to get um, better anytime soon because the implications are that the conflict in Ukraine is something that's going to be long and drawn out. And that's going to mean that there's going to be a, a recalibration of global supply chains where we now look to other markets to satisfy the demand from our own customers. Now, Mr. Dipsy, there is also the concern that um, as a result of some of the items being zero-rated, some uh, um, supermarkets may have marked up their prices even more. I mean, has the association been getting any complaints about this, or is there any way that the association can get involved when these things like these occur? Sure, sure, sure. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a good point, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, make, and I'll, I'll paint this picture for the consumer. The reality is that where you have so many supermarkets operating in a hyper-saturated environment because the environment space for retail is so hyper-saturated, the consumer has so many options and all of these supermarkets are vying for the dollar in your wallet. The, the implications for price gouging is something that has always come up time and again, but the membership within the supermarket association is one that is of a very high standard. They are not looking for your dollar today. They are looking for a sustainable customer that they can service on a revolving basis. We have worked closely with entities such as the Fair Trading Commission and the Consumer Affairs Division to work out any complaints that may arise. And usually when we ask customers to bring forward their complaints, uh, it's a, in most instances, it's something that cannot be substantiated. And this hyper-saturated environment that we find in retail space and is something that just simply doesn't allow for the price gouging to take place. It's something that when we hear about, um, you know, these, these supermarkets involved, the, um, and there are miscreants, and there are those that may seek to take advantage of certain conditions. However, those conditions simply are not there right now. You may have seen those conditions. Uh, a good example would have been at the very start of the pandemic when people were panic buying uh, certain items such as sanitizers and sprays and that sort of thing. But those things is very much a condition of the past and not the present right now. Uh, Mr. Dipti, uh, we're going to be switching gears a bit because I want to ask you about the cyber attack that Massey Stores uh, would have been victim to last week. I mean, is this a cause for concern for the association? A little known fact is that this has actually been taking place across the space of the last couple of years. Since the start of the pandemic, when people were locked down, obviously we had a lot more closures and certain businesses were considered to be essential. At that time, remember that the world itself was experiencing a lockdown and this actually created the conditions for this kind of mischief to start occurring on a, a more prevalent basis. Now in 2021, we would have met with the Cybersecurity Incident Reporting Unit of the with the, within the Ministry of National Security to discuss strategies, because at that time we were already noting instances of cyber attacks. I think we can point to the 2020 anti macal incident as a precursor to this uh, within the region, and certainly it's not just big entities that 
these attacks are targeting. They're targeting vulnerable systems. So what we've been hearing is that these viruses originate from external territories. Um, most of them we've seen so far come out of Europe, and they end up in the systems, the malware that is, and what happens is that they are able to hijack the system in a form of malware or ransomware, and then the net, and then their networks and their and their internal infrastructure goes down. So this is something that we would have been looking at and trying to educate members with, because remember that we this is a fairly novel terrain for our membership. So we've been trying to bring them up to speed on the contemporary threats from outside. So it's certainly something that while it was shocking to see the leading supermarket chain in the island crippled by this attack, it was not something that I unfortunately cannot say was not aware of at the time. Right. And um, so what is, how is the association uh, protecting its members? Because I believe, I mean, as you rightly said, Massey is the largest supermarket chain. And I mean, for the smaller ones who may be concerned, I mean, what advice can you give them to, you know, protect their data and pr to actually protect themselves from something like this occurring? Well, we actually have a meeting uh, uh, this week again with that same unit named earlier, CSIT. Uh, the Cybersecurity Internet Reporting Unit, and we, we are conducting workshops and seminars within our association to bring them up to speed. We've already seen some reactions within the industry, which uh, I noted a certain number of closures over the weekend where some of the chain stores would have taken measures to try to uh, increase the robust integrity of their own IT architecture and their own systems. But it's, it's really uh, uh, um, something that, you know, again, we're trying to work within the, um, the boundaries. Again, most of our members do not understand how these attacks happen. Um, it's, it's, they're, they're so conditioned to deal with the physical threats of robberies and armed violence that now they have to consider this cyberspace domain. And unfortunately, this is something that's going to be on the up because what we've noted is that since the Russia-Ukraine conflict began, this is something that the world has been experiencing. I mean, look at what happened to Aeropostal within the last two to three weeks. They were uh, hacked and their own customer database was breached. And I think there was a certain level of credit card fraud as a result. So again, customer information and the management of that keychain information is key because, and it's critical because you want to protect that database from mischievous forces. So what we're really working on this week is to ensure that our members fully appreciate the scope of this threat. And it's not just supermarkets, it's a, a, the wider business sector. And those stores and those suppliers and those entities that are plugged into the networks and to the domains are all at risk. Now, Mr. Dipti, we only have a couple minutes left, but you mentioned the instances of shoplifting and robbery. And I mean, we have been seeing the, the viral videos online. Uh, what is the association doing to protect its members or, you know, just to give them that extra boost of security? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We are in a dire economic strait at the moment. We've had people who have been on the fence line and they've and, and, and let's face it, the cost of living has increased and we've seen more more of the vulnerable pockets slip into um, the the cracks of slip through the cracks of society and we are experiencing more of the shoplifting uh, to the extent that we have gangs that move around the country right now and that are organized when it comes to shoplifting and they create distractions within these stores to create the conditions for them to shoplift in the first instance. And we also have seen more of the, um, the smaller store owners being targeted by, by um, armed robbers. So it's certainly a case where right now there's certainly an environment of fear, there's certainly an environment of, con of concern when we consider to that retailer, how do you protect yourself? Because we have a situation right now where um, FULs are, are, are off the table. We have a situation right now where armed security is very expensive to the operation, where we have a, a depressed shopping base that is trading down, as we so noted earlier, where brand royalties are out the window. So we all have certain challenges from our side to face with, as well as this threat of... Um, 
of, of the element of crime. Mm. Mr. Deputy, thank you so much. We are always, always a pleasure to have you here on TTT as you can share some of your views. So thank you so much for joining us again on the Now Morning Show. It was my pleasure. Have a great one, Trinidad, and today. Take care. And that was Mr. Rajiv Dipti, the president of the Supermarket Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Natasha, you know, we discussed a few things. We discussed, yeah. you know, the increasing price of food items. We discussed that cyber attack that uh, Massey actually felt victim to. And we also discussed some instances of shoplifting. I mean, those videos go viral. They do. And, you know, something that he mentioned is so important is even shops have to be careful as well. And you need to structure, you know, lay out your place so that... In the event that it does happen, I mean, we wouldn't want to say it's inevitable, but we see it happen, of we course. See it happen you know, a lot. you're aware of what's going on. And I also, something interesting that he mentioned is the fact that nobody's sticking to a brand anymore, as you mentioned brand before loyalty. going into yes. it. it. It makes sense because yeah. at the end of the day, we need to be able to be smart, we need to be able to budget, and we need to have something delicious to eat. Now, talking about some things that might be delicious, it may not be delicious, but it's going to be interesting. We have a guest coming up next talking about a festival that you don't want to miss. Trinidad and Tobago, the world. Stay tuned. This is the Now Morning Show.